Hello and welcome to another episode of Enro News podcast. This is Nas Shabas and today my guest is Jenny Kuta. She is the three times founder veteran of Wall Street, self-made millionaire and a seasoned entrepreneur. She's founder of some of the most cutting edge startups such as coinlinked.com and Squeaky, a platform associated with the concept of social networking. How are you doing, Jenny? Hi. Thank you so much for having me. I had a pretty long day, but other than that, I'm great. Thank you so much. Perfect. Tell me about Galaxy. Let's start with that. Mhm. What you, is you, Galaxy? Yes, what is Galaxy? Tell me all about it. Well, um I'll give you the shortest version uh and then I can go further into it if need be. But mm. um Galaxy how I usually explain it is uh the open sea of multi chains. So open sea is the number one platform in the web3 space. Okay? Those who are in web3 and if you have not heard of open sea, uh, that's a problem because you should. Uh, the same way as By the way, in the why traditional is it, why is it necessary why for is people it? to know about open sea? Well, it's because first of all um they made 5 billion dollars mm -hmm. in one month in January of this year selling jpegs jpegs <laughs> are you know those Picture. files that we use iPhones uh yeah. to take pictures and if you can sell 5 billion dollars in jpegs in one month you got to be the king and of story okay because money talks and it's not easy for you to do that and mm -hmm. they've done that i mean since they kind of collapse hugely because the market has came down mm -hmm. but um but i'm sure they're fine because just like wall street everything goes up then it goes down then it goes up again yeah i'm going to ask like a, a, a simple question so if the market goes down so the nfts goes go down as well i mean open sea is gonna have less of a profit because bitcoin is doing worse does that, i mean are they directly correlated why is that why is nft directly are, linked to crypto okay they are definitely cor correlated and here's why um to go back a few steps anyone who wants to learn about cryptocurrency you first must know is the godfather of all cryptocurrency so bitcoin was born in 2009 so 13 years ago then if you know bitcoin which is the number 1 you should know the number 2 which is ethereum ethereum is directly connected with open sea why is that when they sold 5 billion dollars worth of jpegs mm -hmm. in january of this year they sold it in ethereum so 5 billion dollars worth of ethereum So of course you can sell Ethereum and swap it back to fiat which is currency right US dollars a pounds um yo know, yuan yen you name it mm. um so that's where the correlation is so the stock market global stock market has been down uh which we calling it a bear market and cryptocurrencies are also down so the ethereum that i just mentioned to you the highest was 4500 per ethereum and then it dropped to two months ago just 700 okay and then now is about 1600 so it's very volatile and that's why it took nfts down with it 
So when the market down, people just afraid and they just sell it. And、mm-hmm. when there's more sellers than buyers, things go down. Supply and demand. Simple as that.、Mm-hmm. Okay. Well, thanks for the explanation. And. Um, I think I kind of interrupted. You were talking about Galaxy, and you brought in OpenSea.、Um, so you can continue with the with Galaxy and its genesis, if if you if you like that. Sure. So、uh, I mentioned that Galaxy is the OpenSea of multi chains. So what does that mean? OpenSea only has one blockchain, which is on Ethereum.、Uh, they do have another chain called Polygon, but No one rarely uses that one. It's called Polygon. On Galaxy, we have a total of six chains. Chains is blockchains. We also have Ethereum, and we have five other blockchains for artists, collectors, NFTs to list and mint their NFTs. So that's the difference between OpenSea and Galaxy. To go a little bit further. You would say, well, why do you need six different chains? Because one of the problems that OpenSea has by having just one chain is that the traffic gets very slow, and that Ethereum is very expensive. For you to mint an NFT, it costs a lot of money.、Mm-hmm. So we built five other chains. These other chains you can mint and list NFTs. Some of them are pennies on a dollar compared to Ethereum, and some of them is even free. So it's a choice. But if you don't want to use those, we also have Ethereum. So there you go. So we just built a different path、uh, for people to have an option and choices to choose. You call Galaxy as all-in-one metaverse, and that's because it. It integrates all of the chains. Is that the reason? Yeah, it not only integrates all of the chains, six chains, but we also have a social media embedded. Because OpenSea, when you mint an NFT, you can't chit chat with anybody.、Mm-hmm. You have to send people out to Discord or Twitter, so they can talk to each other. But we built that on Galaxy too. And then we also built a swapping feature. A swapping feature is you can bring in four hundred and fifty different cryptocurrency, like Dogecoin,、mm. Shiba Inu, and stuff. And you can swap it to six of the chains that we have, because as you know, each of the blockchain they have their own cryptocurrency. Pretend like let's just say Ethereum is Germany. And Germany、mm-hmm. has their own money,、um, and we have another one called Polygon blockchain. And pretend that that's Japan, and you know Japan has their own money, and we have another blockchain. Let's just say called、um, Phantom or Avalanche, and pretend that one is India, and India has their own money. So when Germany and India exchange, you just gotta exchange money. So the swapping feature is like an exchange of different cross chain, so that they can connect with each other, kind of like that. So the swapping、um, feature, we allow four hundred and fifty different cryptocurrency to switch over the crypto of the six blockchain, so they can utilize that to mint, buy, list NFTs, something、so、that. Open、uh, we we can call it an exchange, like a typical exchange of. You can, you can, but the reason why I did not use the term exchange because exchange is a lot bigger, meaning you can buy, sell, but for us, you're just swapping, you、okay. know. So yes, there is a trigger, a buy, sell in there, but it's hidden. You、mm-hmm. don't place a buy. You don't place a sell. You、oh. just place an exchange. Yeah, kind of like、see. that.、Mm-hmm. Okay, interesting. All right,、uh, Galaxy Metaverse is a one-stop shop. Two questions: 
how Galaxy sure. Metaverse is different from other Metaverse solutions also for future. Are you planning to add new features or improve it more in terms of technology? Well, currently, um, the Metaverse is clearly not defined by many people. Um, it depend on who you ask. Every yeah, we, time you last ask Last time some... we agreed, it, it's a concept. And we both agreed, yeah, it's more sort yes. of a concept. Yeah. Yes, so it's a concept. So for us, since it's still at the concept stage, um, we still have not finalized in terms of how we're going to build it out. You know, um, right now we're not there. Uh, we did plan on the end of this year, but obviously that has changed because of the win uh, crypto winter bear market. We're just thankful that unlike there are at least a dozen large crypto companies that have bankrupt overnight, they were uh, one billion, two, three, four billion dollars uh, in market cap value, and they went zero overnight. So it's a really bad time for a lot of crypto companies. So we're already thankful that we're okay. So for us to delay the calendar in terms of our plans, like I'm sure you heard about the roadmap. Uh, I don't think that's a problem as long as you're still alive and kicking. Sorry, I, I didn't get the roadmap reference. What do you mean by that? A roadmap is a term in the crypto space similar to a business plan. So I'm sure you know a business plan or you, if you're in the fundraising, you might heard the term uh, a deck like a pitch deck. So a pitch deck has maybe 20 slides, tells about the company, and there's probably one or two slides that gives projections of what uh -huh. the company is going to do, financial, uh, product-wise. So a roadmap in the crypto world is like that. Okay. A roadmap is a projection. This is what we're planning on doing, blah, blah, blah. So they call that a roadmap. Mm -hmm. When you see the bull market coming, I mean, of course, no one can really tell. I mean, I don't want you to be precise, but what's your hunch? You said it's going to be kind of the winter bear market. Um, then when do you see it rising again? Okay. Um, this question, I'm going to take it two paths. Okay. Uh, the first path is let's call it the traditional path. Traditional is stocks, bond, Wall Street, okay? Um, traditional stocks. That one, we have to gear towards micro, macro economy, the politics, election, wars, okay? All that reflects the ups and downs of the traditional market. On the crypto space, by the way, it does go side by side with the traditional, except Bitcoin, which is the godfather of cryptocurrency, um, they have this thing called Bitcoin halving, H-A-L-V-I-N-G, halving. And hal the next halving is 2024. The last halving was 2020, I believe. So every four years. Now, the thing with the history of Bitcoin since the birth of Bitcoin is every time there's a halving. Mm -hmm. Right after that, just a couple months, Bitcoin breaks an all-time high every single time. Okay, now you look at it, Bitcoin was born in 2009. Then there's the first halving, the second halving, the third halving, which just happened. The next halving, I believe, is the fourth halving, which is 2024. Everybody's going to make the same bet again. Now, I've written an article 
um, very detailedly uh, on the on on one of the media. I think the stock. Uh, I forgot, um, but it's on a, a a huge media, but their talk about stock. So um, they interview me, and I wrote a piece. Uh, I, I did an analysis on that, and I told them that after the next halving, which is twenty twenty four, I believe Bitcoin will break a hundred thousand dollar because the last halving. Bitcoin broke an all-time high of 17,000. From 17,000, it went way down to 3,000. Then the Bitcoin halving occur in 2020. It went from 3,000 all the way up to $69,000. Okay, so now it's back down. Bitcoin is about $20,000. And so I believe after the next halving, which is 2024, it's going to break 100. And if you ever see Bitcoin at 100,000, you should remember this podcast. You send me an email, go find me on Twitter and say, oh my God, Jenny, you're correct. Because it's trading at a hundred thousand now, and I really? say, see, if 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 anyone were to just buy even ten thousand dollar, because you can buy a fraction of a bitcoin. So imagine if you buy ten thousand dollars worth of bitcoin right now, okay, and bitcoin is at twenty thousand dollar. Let me do a quick math for you. Uh, you would be buying half of a bitcoin and now you take half of a bitcoin you times a hundred thousand dollars you just turn your ten thousand to fifty grand i should remember i'm definitely going to tweet you when that happens <laughs> okay yeah. So by, by the way, go. is is that article easily searchable or if possible could you please send it I, in? I, I really i'll find read. it for you right now yeah i'll i'll find it for you right now so as you take me on to the next question yeah i, will I was i was just article. going to go back to your prediction by the way when you say after the having halving it, it just halving. breaks through um yes is it just your um viewpoint or your analysis i ask this because um is it like one of the secrets or one of the information like not a lot of people know or now if it's become a pattern everyone's gonna everyone's gonna be betting on um you know it's it, going to the moon is right, it going, going to be to that the moon. yeah is it going to be that predictable or people are just gonna you know get disappointed because it has become a pattern like i mean we're m- kind of making it more predictable saying that it's just gonna perform that well do you know what i mean like the right. first time it was it was fine the third time was the charm and then it's just kind of predictable everyone is gonna invest so much money because expecting it to break through but do you see it happening for the fifth time i guess is this the fifth halving halving yeah and you know what of course no one has the crystal ball okay um i just gave you the link uh it was published on the stock dork there was the reason why i forgot the word dork because then i'm a dork <laughs> right <laughs> so um uh yeah so uh jenny jenna gleesman uh she interviewed me and then she penned and as you read the article there um i share my thoughts about the bitcoin halving in very detail and therefore even the technical analysis of it too um and how i take bitcoin up to a hundred thousand but to be honest with you, um, and your your question is that um, true? A lot of the Bitcoin OGs, OG stands for, I guess, the original Reasonable. gangster, like the original, like way back, and they're super believers of Bitcoin. They're gonna bet on it. I'm gonna bet on it. 
because um are you an OG? I'm not an OG. I came in around 2015 and that was when I bought Bitcoin the first time. But when I came in, um I also made a very bold prediction when it was at an all-time high. I was speaking at South by Southwest. I'm sure you've heard of the event. And it's still on Google and I screen capture people talk about it. I was on stage and I said that Bitcoin will drop to 5,000. At the time, I get a lot of haters, to be honest with you. Uh, they say, oh, she doesn't know what she's talking about. And then it happened. They, they might call you a naysayer or something. Yeah, and hater or like FUD. FUD is uh, fear, uncertainty, and doubt. Like I throw out FUDs, right? But right after I say it, within probably seven months, Bitcoin started to drop very fast. What was your reasoning, and the then, main one? Well, I follow the technical patterns. And oh. if you have a chance to read that, um, the Stock Dork article, I share the patterns why, and I believe the exact pattern is happening again right now. So if you take every four years, right? Because the, mm. the halving happens every four years. So you cut that four years, then you cut another four years, then you cut another four years, and you put them on top of each other. The chart literally duplicates. Do it. The bit, especially in, I'm just talking about Bitcoin, not any other crypto. So right after halving, let's just say halving is right here. So it, Bitcoin is usually down and then it's all going up. Oh, and then it breaks an all time high and it goes up, up, up. And then just a year before the halving, Okay, which or two years before the halving, it started to collapse, which is right now 2022. Then a year before the halving, which is next year, 2023, it starts to go sideways. And then the halving happens. And then psh, three times already. I mean, mm. go do the it's simple. I mean, sometimes people just buy, sell, and they don't look into it you know i think it's a piece of cake you know i like numbers and i like to read things and i said let me just do it this way all you gotta do is cut the chart of bitcoin every four years and then to, you put them on top of each other then you see the correlation right there i mean mm. of course i do my analysis different but when i explain it to like um like to, to a five-year-old, that mm -hmm. is how I would explain it because it's simple to understand. Now, if I wanted to explain super technical, I can, but no one going to understand that. And then it's a waste of everyone's time. Um, but I did explain it quite technically uh, via the stock dork when you have a chance to, to take a look at that. We're going to make sure to put the link of this article when we put out the podcast. Um, my question, prior to 2015, when you got into crypto and Bitcoin, uh, did you have a background in investment? Were you into conventional investing before that? Yes. It's a matter yeah. of fact, I founded two investment banking, uh, investment banking firms, which another terms would be um, broker dealers, which is similar to Goldman Sachs, Morgan Stanley, but a baby side, like they are trillions of dollars. At the time, I managed about half a billion, which is a lot of money. And I was an analyst. Um, we did um, uh, make markets. We were a market maker for a few of the stocks. Uh, so I was controlling uh, the market making. And so... I do technical and fundamental analysis. So I do mm -hmm. have a background and experience on that. Do you have an aversion to banking system, the currency, like Bitcoin, the genesis of Bitcoin, Satoshi Nakamoto, he came up with the idea because of the, the crash of 2008, 
And he had an aversion. He didn't want the banks to have the monopoly to control the money supply and control the lives of the people. So do you share the same views? And that's why you're into crypto? Well, you know, yes and no. Um, I believe I'm in crypto is because um, I accidentally look into it around 2015. That was the time when I believe you remember, um, maybe a year or two prior to that, there was a movie called The Social Network, which is oh, yeah. about Mark Zuckerberg and the twins called, named the Winklevoss twins. So, of course, I was one of them, and I went to see the movie. I was fascinated about the movie because I built Squeaky based upon that, which you mentioned at the earlier when you introduced me at the beginning. And so I was fascinated with Mark Zuckerberg, the Winklevoss twins. And right after the Winklevoss twins lost the case against Mark Zuckerberg. So Mark Zuckerberg, of course, Facebook is his now. And I think the Winklevoss twins got only either 68 or $86 million from the lawsuit. So then right after that, I was following the twins to see what they would do because I thought that in the movie, the twins weren't very smart. I mean, they went to Harvard, their father was a lawyer, and how can you lose that to Mark Zuckerberg? It make no sense to me, right? And so I was following them to see what they were going to do. And then they were all over TV, CNBC, about this new venture called Bitcoin. I say hmm. Bitcoin. I mean, at that time, I say, what did, were they the founders of Bitcoin? So this was around 2015, all right, 2014, 2015. And I say, eh, that was when I was still busy running my company. But the word Bitcoin came into my mind for the first time because of the Winklevoss twins. Then later that year, 2015, I had more time and I dug deeper into what is this Bitcoin. And the more deeper I dug, the more I liked it. Because when I was on Wall Street and making a market and recommending stocks, 99% of my portfolios with my clients are tech stocks. Mm -hmm. I'm into semiconductors, SRAM, DRAM, uh, software, um, Oracle, IBM, um, you know, so I'm very fascinated, which is tech. I rarely buy other stocks like boring retailers or medical, which I don't understand. Um, so I stuck with tech. So it was an easy merge from that to cryptocurrency because cryptocurrency is everything tech. Not only that, but it's also publicly traded. It's traded on cryptocurrency exchange. So to move from Wall Street, the stock market, to crypto, it's, it's nothing different. I think it's more fascinating because it goes from centralization where human beings like you and I are controlling everything versus decentralization where everything is being controlled by codes and that is fascinating uh i'm gonna uh ask the last question regarding the crypto part i'm gonna move to uh the gallic in the conventional part of the podcast um how do you respond to people who says you know, say a cryptocurrency doesn't have any fundamental value and when you compare it to fiat fiat is kind of in a way backed by the government's protection um they have an economic system they provide that how does that relate with the cryptocurrency? And I'm talking way back when you started uh, looking at Bitcoin. So you must have thought about it. Um, I see there's tech and I see people are interested and people are making money. But then when you talk about the fundamental value or, um, you know, the bubble, um, that was the term. So how, how did you evaluate all of that? Well, I think there's different valuation. Like, for example, let me turn around and ask you, how do people evaluate gold? 
gold has no yeah. ornamental, but gold has a value, right? And that mm -hmm. value, not only just gold, well, at least with gold, you and I could probably say like, you know, like in the Asian community, when you attend weddings, I mean, you see gold everywhere. Go here, go here, go here, right? Earrings, diamonds, and gold. But then how about silver, platinum? Why are they valuable? I get gold. Some, some people even use gold as a part of their tooth. I'm not sure if you've seen that, right? Okay. Oh, I mean, we talked about OG, so they have these yeah, bling bling. Gold teeth, like literally real gold. But we've never, and then silver. I think some people do use silver in their teeth too. But then there's that question. If a person were to ask me, just like you just asked me, I will first ask them back. I say, I get you. Then think about this. How do people analyze goal? How do people put a value on goal? We don't know how much goal is out there because the goal that hasn't been mined yet, it's still under the mountains, the rock somewhere. So how do you know how valuable goal is? Okay. But then you take that, you put it into Bitcoin. I'm not going to mention other cryptocurrency. I will, if need to. There are over 15,000 different cryptocurrencies, but I'm just going to talk about the OG, which is Bitcoin. The scarcity, scarcity is the value of Bitcoin, is because it only has 21 million. 21 million. Now, if you say that, but Jenny, what is this Bitcoin? Who cares if it has 21 million? Okay, then I'll ask you back. What is this thing about gold? It's does we don't even know how much is still left out there, but people treat gold like gold, like as if it's like so valuable. Okay. So my point is in the world that we live in, full of human beings, you and I. We are strange creatures. I'll tell you that. We are strange creatures. Why are we strange? We're strange because we place value on certain things. And if we have a community follower that say, oh, yeah, Jenny's right. Mm. If Jenny says that Bitcoin is valuable, it's valuable and we're going to back her. That's what happened happened with gold 5,000 years ago. Did you know that? Gold has been 5,000 years old. So imagine 5,000 years. You know how we talk about building communities today? Hmm. They've been building communities for gold for 5,000 years. I mean, I don't know how you are. I mean, I'm only in my 40s, right? Imagine live for 5,000 years. You can't do that. But gold has lived for 5,000 years. And if you can picture how the communities grew to support gold for us, you and I, today, 2022, the year's 2022. Well, actually, we just, we're still August, but tomorrow is September. Look how big the community grew because 5,000 years. Bitcoin is only 13 years old, 13 years old. Now, by the time that Bitcoin is 5,000 years old, we both will be dead and we would not know how much Bitcoin would be worth then. It could be a million dollar. We wouldn't know that, right? Mm -hmm. And that's my answer because we are human beings and we are odd creatures. So if we want something to be valuable, we believe it, we follow it through years and years, it just built up. And that's called liquidity. And that's how Bitcoin goes from literally nothing 13 years ago to 17,000, the last halving, to 69,000, this coming halving, so I'm betting the next halving 
is going to be above a hundred thousand. The second part I'll answer you is about the fundamental of a company. Bitcoin is not a company, so we can't compare that to Apple computers, which is Tim Cook. We can't compare that to Tesla, which is Elon Musk, or Microsoft, the former Bill Gates, or Facebook Meta, Mark Zuckerberg. Bitcoin doesn't have a CEO. It's strictly decentralized. The person who created it by the name of Satoshi Nakamoto, we don't know if he or she is even Japanese, but the name sounds Japanese. It could be an organization. It could be a company. It could even be a political country. Okay, that they created it to shift the monetary from being all into the U.S. dollar to sidetrack into this decentralized thing called Bitcoin, and it's true because the cryptocurrency market recently, before the dip, it reached three. Trillion dollars. What had have you or I ever heard that can come out in thirteen years, dominate the world, and capture a three trillion, not billion, trillion market cap? I've never seen it. Never seen it. Mm-hmm. So. That's why it's fascinating, and even though I came from the traditional Wall Street, I mean, I gotta have the balance sheets, I gotta have the income statement. I'm an angel investor. I'm a VC. There's no way I would write a check to a company if you don't have these things called the fundamental analysis of the company. But why am I fascinated about Bitcoin? It has no CEOs. It's because of that that I believe the global market around the world is gonna shift, starting from millennials, Gen Z, and onward. I'm a younger Gen X, so I'm more attached to the millennials. I get the technology. I get the passion of what's going on, and that's why I'm at the borderline. Elder Gen X, forget about the boomers; they're not going to learn. They they don't understand anything, so we're not going to teach them. They're gone, okay? But it's eighty percent of all millennials are into crypto. If you check the data, Gen Z. They're into crypto, but they're also into NFTs, and they're more scatter. But again, five thousand years from now, gold might not be gold anymore. Everything's gonna be digitized, and then we gonna—I mean, selfless cars. Elon's already doing that. Um, we won't be here to know. But you know what? I wish I would come back like a fly on the wall. I would love to see it. Five thousand years from now, maybe your consciousness would be sitting in a code in a hard hard drive somewhere to observe that.、Maybe. Yeah, exactly. You know, I mean, if you understand the depthness that I understand, that's when you see how fascinating it is. But even even I understand it deeply more than others. I haven't seen anyone. Who can clearly define the metaverse? So even though you go to Galaxy IO and you see our big fonts right there and all in one metaverse, because metaverse can be defined as anything because it's still being built out at the moment. Now, final thing, Mark Zuckerberg. He already spent ten billion dollars. To build out the metaverse for Meta, and you know what? If you hang around Twitter long enough, which I have, or you Google it, it's a joke. 
what Mark Zuckerberg has built um, and his avatar that he is, you Google it, you see Mark Zuckerberg's avatar, horrible, horrible. It's worse than some of the games of a much smaller startups um, when it comes to the graphic, when it comes to realism. I mean, Mark Zuckerberg's $10 billion in the metaverse, it's a joke. And recently, I'm not sure you know who she is, but her name is Grimes, G-R-I-M-E-S. She's actually the mother of two of Elon Musk's children. Okay, they're not together now, uh -huh. but one of her child with Elon is a baby boy, and they name him Baby X, like X. Okay, mm -hmm. so yeah, if you that. Google Elon Musk Baby X, that's Grimes' son with mm -hmm. Elon. Recently, Grimes tweeted that if Mark Zuckerberg is leading the metaverse, we're doomed. Okay, we're doomed. So, and I retweeted that tweet and I said, you know what? You're right. You know, so I back up Grimes. I mean, if he were to give that $10 billion to any startup, trust me, they would probably done a lot better. So mm -hmm. he's out of touch of, of, of the Web3 space. Uh, he was great 15 years ago, stealing Facebook from the Winklevoss twins and, you know, but now he's too late to steal the Web3 or the metaverse from people. And right now, I believe that it backfired because remember the Winklevoss twins, the one he stole Facebook from, they're much ahead of him because they were the one who built Gemini, the second largest crypto exchange behind Coinbase. And they name it mm -hmm. Gemini. Who do you think should lead the meta meta race, if not Facebook? Facebook is incompetent. Well, you know, I don't think anybody is going to lead the metaverse. I think there are going to be um, micro verses, which means everybody will oh. have their own micro verse not metaverse then together it's called a metaverse but no singular one is going to build the metaverse no whoever gonna believe in that or you know try to make someone believe in that which is facebook facebook mark zuckerberg said that oh we're gonna lead the metaverse uh no not with that avatar that you spent 10 billion dollars on um, so in the future, I believe more of micro versus not metaverses. So each of us will create our own mini versus, and then together the digital world, one microverse or mini verse will connect with the other, and then it becomes that metaverse. That's what I believe. Perfect. All right. I'm going to move to the next question. Uh, we can, went into a tangent with the, the crypto. By the way, productive talk. I loved it. Um, okay. Okay. Do you think there's something missing in um, Galaxy uh, that you want to add in terms of features and improvement in technology? Any pain points in particular uh, in Galaxy, how it has come so far? So how would you like to improve Yes, it's a matter of fact, um, I'm glad that we did a retape and the last taping, somehow it didn't turn out right. And you know what, I, I believe in faith because effective today, I have a new plan for Galaxy. So I came back from a number of meetings and um, I can't share that plan yet but um let's just say it this way you know how elon musk he has multiple companies but 
they're somewhat interconnected. There's SpaceX, there's Tesla. Uh, I forgot some of his other companies. Um, and they're connected through Elon Musk, right? I'm doing something similar to that, but it's going to be connected to the parent company of Galaxy. So Galaxy is the product. So as you can see here, it says buy Hoto Assets, right? Hoto Assets is the parent company, like Alphabet is the parent company of Google, right? So Google is like Galaxy, but Google is one product. Alphabet, if you do a quick search on Google, Alphabet has a lot of products besides Google. And so I'm working on that, which will go side by side with Galaxy. And I'm going to put that to work immediately next week because this weekend we have labor day weekend oh. so um if you come back if we come back a month or two months from now um i'll give you the part two of what we're doing but i believe that the part two of what i'm doing it's actually even bigger than galaxy because as you, I'm not sure if you're aware, but if you didn't, I'll share with you now. I was not the original founders of Hodo Assets, okay? Um, they acquired my coin link August of last year. And I came on as a co-founder and COO. So then the original founders, one of which is the CTO. Um, they now took control of my coin link, um, which was a decentralized social commerce. Okay. And then together they built Galaxy. Okay. Um, I didn't have much opinion in the build. And then boom, boom, bang, June of this year, the board asked me to become CEO of the company. And so I had a couple of requirements before I took the position. The requirements were fulfilled. And so therefore, um, I took on, it's been three months. So now this idea that I just told you about, that I came back from meetings today, mm -hmm. It's totally on me. So I'm going to take the company towards a different path. And that's all I'm going to share with you <laughs> at the moment. Okay, I was just going to ask more, like reveal a bit more, but it's okay. Uh, good luck to you, by the way. Um, I'm glad to Thank hear you. that. Um, yes. All right. So before we wrap up, how will the metaverse unfold and transform the enterprise? Um, a little bit about the economy of Metaverse. If you would like to share some insights, what do you think? Mm, well, first of all, um, if we are to visualize what the Metaverse would be, um, I would guide everyone back to the movie called Avatar. I think they're gonna come out with Avatar 2, I think this Christmas, I think. Yeah. Um, so I'm definitely gonna go watch that. But in the movie Avatar, um, I believe there was this army, navy soldier. He was paralyzed in the real world. But in Avatar, which is in the other world, he was one of the strongest men in this other world. He wasn't crippled. So that's the metaverse to me is a joint force between the two worlds. Like I'm Jenny Ta now. And when I 
click on my avatar. It's either through a glass, could be a watch, a wristwatch, could be a simple ring, could be a simple uh, medical device that you can wear like a sticker. There's mm -hmm. a lot of technology. So by touching one of those, again, a phone, a glass, anything, you actually go into the metaverse. And so the metaverse and the real world will be interconnected when it comes to the financial aspect. Because why? We've already seen a lot of the video games. If, if uh, you've heard there were video games that little kids would be playing, that their parents would be paying a lot of money for them to keep a certain goldfish alive. Literally, I'm dead serious. Mm -hmm. The parents, because they love their kid, their kid said, Mama, Dada, I want to play this game. And you got to buy me this goldfish. But it's not a real goldfish outside. It's, it's a digitized goldfish. But you do the exact same thing. You have to clean the water. You got to feed it every day. And then if you go on vacation and you forget to feed it, when you come back, it dies. And then you got to spend more money. You buy a new goldfish because you love your son or your daughter and they just happen to love that game. Mm. That's the metaverse. That's a, a mini explanation of the metaverse. But if you want to, ex to, to see bigger, then the metaverse is going to have the exact duplicate of the real world. It's going to have a movie theater. It's going to have restaurants, bowling alleys, concerts. So then if you were to say, well, Jenny, okay, talk to me. Why do I need to do that in the metaverse when I could do that in real life? Well, let me answer you this way. Was it 15 years ago when text messaging became the thing i remember i was telling my mom that my mom keeps seeing me holding the phone and typing all the time and then she said what are you doing i say well i'm talking to my friends mom and then at the time our mothers how they would talk to their friends would be they pick up the phone and they call them Hey, Susan, how is it going? But me at the time, I'm talking to my friend by texting. So my mom would say, that makes no sense. Why would you want to type when you could just call them and talk on the phone? And I say, mom, you won't understand. And so 15 years later, my mom's texting her friends right now. Yes. Okay. My mom's texting her friend. 15 years ago, she was questioning me. So the thing is, it's very hard for us to visualize, especially if we don't understand the depthness of this technology, we won't get it. But the future is the metaverse. You can have a party, a concert. Let's say you, let's just say I'm in California. I have friends in India, in Singapore, in uh uh, friends, we can get together and have a party on the metaverse. And it's like, we're all going to be there. Okay. Now then you're going to come up with another question. And I say, and you could say, you know what, Jenny, that doesn't make sense to me. I mean, why would you want, but you know what? A lot of things when it comes to technology, it doesn't make sense, but it becomes hot. I mean, final thing, take this TikTok situation. I don't have TikTok, okay? But no one would ever thought that there would be another social app that would be more popular than Facebook and until TikTok came out. TikTok, what people make simple five, 10 second videos, and then it became popular. So as you can see, it goes back to the thing that I was telling you, that human beings like us, we are very strange creatures. And when we're adapted to something and we like something, nothing can stop us. And if there are more of us who does the same thing, 
follow each other, then that becomes a hit. And the next thing that's going to become a hit is the metaverse. That's it. Okay, We're still I'm very back. early, though. We're still very early, though. Yeah. Yeah. On that note, uh, what would you say to female developers, women developers who want to break into the metaverse space? Um, any message for them? Wow. You know, I empower women. I support women. I invest in women. Um, and so the only simplest thing for me to encourage women, young, old, it's never too late to get into the crypto space, Web3 space, fintech, blockchain, they're all one of the same because they're all interconnected, okay? Um, we're still very early. It's still a male-dominated industry just like everything else. But don't get um, intimidated by it. Uh, I'm in here, okay? You got to make your own space. You got to get the knowledge. And you'll be surprised how far you can go because it's very technically driven, but it's not that difficult. If you really want it, you can do it. So just dive in, jump in, get on Twitter, you know, meet people, uh, read a lot. If you don't understand certain things, don't be, don't hesitate to ask because that's how you learn. I mean, and shows like this, you know, you listen to shows like this and every little bit you get bits here and there and that's how knowledge is formed and that's would be my encouragement to all the ladies out there mm -hmm. perfect uh thank you so much jenny it was wonderful uh, doing the podcast mm -hmm.